And here you go, Carol. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank Miriam and L.A. Chad for allowing me this opportunity to speak to you today on a topic that I think we all like to talk about and hope to one day overcome. And I'm going to assume that those of you who are here tonight did not procrastinate huh? signing up and getting in the car and coming over, right? right. right. So you guys are already ahead of it, yeah. right? Yay. Because you made it here and you didn't procrastinate that not happening, so good, good job. Thank you so much for coming out. I know that we all have families and lives and jobs and it's hard to come someplace at night. So I really want to make this worthwhile for you to have made the time and effort to get here. So that's my intention. And in order to do that, I have come up with a handout that I'm going to ask all of you to make sure you have. We're going to be going through it. If you turn over to the second page, you'll notice that we're going to be doing some work together. So get out your pens and pencils and let's see what you can accomplish to put ADHD procrastination in your rear view mirror. How many people want to put that in your rear view mirror? Raise your hand. Great. Well, I think I'm going to be preaching to the choir tonight. <laughs> Good job. So it's an interesting topic, and we're going to be very interactive. However, I've done enough of these presentations to know that if you have a comment to make, make it short, because we have a lot to do, a limited period of time. I want to hear from you, and I don't want to have to cut you off. If I, if, if I have to cut you off, however, however I will, just to make sure that we all get the maximum out of this experience. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Are you? Great. Okay, so the first page is really kind of just reading up on what are people saying about procrastination. Procrastination, what we thought it was and what people are saying now, has changed dramatically in the last 10 years. So one of the things that I thought was really interesting, and I'd like to start with, with, with Wikipedia, because Wikipedia has this tendency to always grab the essence of something. You know, have any of you guys noticed that? That, you know, if you want a quick but reliable definition or description of something, Wikipedia can give it to you. In fact, I love what they have to say about ADHD. It's the best explanation, description, and specific details that I think is on the internet. So this is what Wikipedia says. It's the avoidance of doing a task that needs to be accomplished by a deadline, right? That's what procrastination is. It could be further stated as habitual or intentional delay of starting or finishing a task. So what is this intentional delay of starting or finishing a task? Is Wikipedia right about that? Right? So um, what I thought was really interesting, and this is the second paragraph is from Wikipedia too. From a cultural perspective, students from both Western and non-Western cultures <laughs> exhibit procrastination for different reasons, right? So that the students from non-Western cultures tend to procrastinate to avoid looking incompetent, whereas students from Western cultures tend to procrastinate to avoid doing worse than they have done before or for failing to learn as much as they should. So that's an interesting perspective too. Procrastination is not just a Western phenomena, it's a world phenomena. You know, what they have found in research on this issue, looking at brains, everybody know what the amygdala is? I always have a hard time pronouncing that, amygdala, there we go, amygdala, that little teeny part of our brain, the fight or, fight or flight um, kind of protects us as our safety net if something's happening and we need to do something about it so we don't get into trouble. Well, that little thing that has a big purpose in our brain, that causes us to, what's the word, to go toward pleasure and away from pain. In other words, to look for short-term immediate responses rather than long-term gains, right? So we want immediate feedback, we want to be able to get something done, and we want a reward right away. That's because of the amygdala. That's what causes it. And it's a safety mechanism. That's why it's there. 
However, it does contribute to procrastination because without any emotional or triggers or anything that we're trying to avoid, the first thing that happens is if we don't want to do something, we don't do it. We go do something else because the amygdala says, well, you know, if you do this, all this is going to happen and you can do it later and you'll fail, so why even bother? Any of those naysayer negative things, that's what happens first. So I thought that was really interesting because I didn't really understand that until I started doing some research on this. So um, the other thing I thought was that pigeons, pigeons procrastinate. Pigeons. Now who would have thought pigeons procrastinate? But they do. There's some really interesting research on how pigeons would procrastinate doing something if they found something else that was more, now you think, well, all animals do that. No, pigeons have a way of procrastinating that is different from avoidance and approach. Approaching the cracker on the sidewalk, or avoiding the cracker on the sidewalk, they actually will wait and do some other stuff in order to delay gratification. So that's an interesting study. Um, so basically the research says that pigeons tend to choose a complex but delay task rather than easy but hurry up one. So um, that, as I said, was unexpected. Okay, so what is psychology, we're on the second page now. What does psychology and behavioral science say about procrastination? Researchers have found that when you think about your future self, it's easy for your brain to see the value in taking action with long-term benefits. The future self values long-term rewards. But what happens? That's all well and good that we should feel that way and that we should be wired that way. But the problem is, while the future self sets goals, only the future, only the present self can take actions. When the time comes to make a decision, you're no longer making a choice for your future self. Who are you making a choice for? Now. Now, now your present self. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. The future self is all well and good, but in the moment, what you're choosing is for the present self. And what does the present self want to do? Anybody? Nothing. Enjoying it. <laughs> Chase the shiny ball, like we like yeah. to say in ADHD parlance. Um, avoid it because uh, it's not going to feel good. Or avoid it because, what's another reason? Failure. Failure? Failure, right. Fear of failure. Or what happens if I do it? Oh my gosh, what's going to happen if I do it? So there's that unknown element as well. Any other reasons to to procrastinate, you guys have, I said you're procrastinators, so share where you procrastinate. Fear, anxiety. Anxiety? Don't Why would you have anxiety? The, the fear of, you know, the fear of it's not good enough or it's something like that. Yeah, fear. Yeah. Fear, fear, fear. fear. Yeah, lots of fear. Fear. Very yeah. good. Yes. What the game I play on myself is I don't feel like doing it now. So exactly. Just, so I have to wait till I feel like it. Oh, that's yeah. a real game play. Right. In my brain. Right. And that's that short term benefit that overcomes and outweighs the long term benefit. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to go to college, but you just don't feel like doing the application right now. <laughs> You'll do it when? When will you do it? Whenever. Right. When Whenever? Like tomorrow? What happens with tomorrow? Tomorrow it never comes. So. Tomorrow never comes. So don't. And then procrastination is kind of. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say addictive, but procrastination, it's the kind of thing where once you start, it's hard to what? Stop it. It's hard to stop. Once you start, oh okay, I made it through that moment. I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow comes. Okay, made it through that moment. And oftentimes you don't get to it until what? You're forced. You're forced. You're either not going to make it to college. Your parents are going to ground you. No, you won't have the car for two weekends. Um, and you know, it finally dawns on you that you better sit down and do it. And what happens is the adrenaline, mm -hmm. the adrenaline kicks in because now you're in crisis mode, and the adrenaline is what finally gets you to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So. 
I'm going to ask you a question. You guys can do like popcorn. Just raise your hand. How many of you, well, let me ask it this way. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is procrastination in your life? 1 being, eh, no problem. 10 being, it's got me stuck. Anybody? 8. Uh, I'd say 8. 8? 7. 7? 4. Come on, everybody. Who said 4? 4. Oh, you have that pretty much under control. You should work with me. Ah, Four's not I, bad. I thought 10 was good. No, 10 is opposite. Oh, I went the wrong way. Oh, that's okay. So what are, so what are you? What are you really? Eight or? Well, I'd say probably eight. Eight. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Come on. There's a lot of people in here and I haven't heard from everybody. Yes. Eight, nine-ish. Eight and nine-ish? OK, so with the right group of people came. Yes. <laughs> you procrastinate on answering, right? Procrastination is everywhere at every moment. And if we're not careful, we're not even going to notice it. How many yes. people think they're aware of procrastinating? All the time they're procrastinating. Every time. Don't raise your hand unless you know every time. Okay, you do. And you do. What, how many, this is a better question for you guys. How many or how much do you think it's costing you? How many of you are aware of what it's costing you, right? Because that's a lot of the work I do with my clients is helping them understand what they're sacrificing, what it's costing them. And you know what? We're human beings. We get motivated by rewards and consequences. In this case, what I've learned is that usually it's the consequences and the rewards together that make people finally sit up and say, I've got to do something about this. You know, because there's all kinds of things. What are some things that procrastination is costing you? Anybody? Yes? Money. Money. Woo, how important is money in our life? Well, I would say 10 plus, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? What's it costing you? A bedroom. A what? A bedroom. A bedroom. OK. You're trying to redo your bedroom, or? No, it's cluttered. Oh, it's so cluttered. OK. It's causing her a decent good night's rest. Right? And a good night, a bedroom where she can feel comfortable and at peace. Yes? Shame. Shame. Oh, it goes right to my heart when I hear that. Because well, shame is one of those so things. I don't even to come to my house. Right, right. You know, shame, nobody should have to feel. But we all, most of us, have had experience with shame before. So if it's causing you shame, we need to look at that. Because guess what, folks? It doesn't have to be that way. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to look at what you can do about it. So the thing about procrastination, it is largely fueled by fear. Fear of failing, fear of succeeding, fear of not being good enough, fear of not being worthy, fear of what? What are some other fears that are fueling procrastination. Because you may think you're just practicing avoidance. But what's the difference between avoidance and procrastination? Go ahead. No, I was going to say uh, fear of feeling that you're not smart enough. Fear that you're, right, the feeling that you're not smart enough? To do it. Right, so what's the difference between procrastination and avoidance? I don't know. That's a good one, isn't it, to think about? Are they the same thing? Just slightly different descriptors? Yes. yes, slightly different. All right, so avoidance is what we do. Procrastination is the effect of what we do. Ah. How about that? Mm -hmm. All right, so avoidance is what we do when we procrastinate, but procrastination is what the effect of that avoidance gives us. Because avoiding something doesn't have to keep continuing. But in the procrastination realm, it does. So um, it's really important to me that we all are here together, accepting who we are, and we know we're procrastinators. And supporting each other is really an important part of being a human and in our community with each other. So I'm hoping that this community, which I'm sure it is, is a supportive community so everybody in this room can be feeling that, yeah, you've got a, a procrastination issues, I've got procrastination issues,
but we're all in the same thing together. Mine may be different from yours, but it's still procrastination. Okay, so if you turn over and um, today's more, page two, I'm sorry, today's more widely accepted definitions, procrastination is inability to manage negative moods around a task. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, so you have to do something, why don't you do it? Just do it, get it over with. You know, people that don't procrastinate or that see you procrastinating, even though they procrastinate, but they notice you're procrastinating, huh. they're gonna say, just get it over with. You're gonna feel a whole lot better when it's done. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Why don't we just get it over with? You're gonna feel better. All of you are gonna feel better when you just do it. You can't, why? It's like a blockage. There's a blockage. Okay, tell me more about that. It's like when I, I got the room too. <laughs> the room. Let it go, and I feel like I've done all the classes to be, you know, all the work. But there's still, like, when I'm going, I go, oh, I don't, there's those thoughts that will come in. Oh, it's going to take too long. Oh, okay. You know, there's all these thoughts, and I get overwhelmed, and I don't do it. Right. And, and for people that have, Executive function issues or ADHD, getting overwhelmed is a thing, right? It's a serious thing because our brain doesn't process the same way that neurotypical people process. Our brain sees it all at once. It doesn't see um, a progression of we should do this first and this second and this third. So for us, it's really hard to take in all of that, it's easy to get overwhelmed. And what do we do when we get overwhelmed? If we have a neuro... Shut down. Atypical brain. Shut down. Shut down, exactly, we shut down. So that's an added, although all kinds of people, neurotypicals and neuroatypicals procrastinate, it's harder for us because we have extra issues around getting things done. So um, there are ways that we can take care of that. Yes, ma'am. What is executive function? Okay, executive functions are the pre, you know, prefrontal cortex of the brain. This is where people, the part of the brain, rather, that allow people to start things, stop things, finish things, pay attention. Multitask. Multitask. Hold on to yourself. Stop and think before you act. That's called impulsivity. Um, working brain, the part of your brain that can internally, like we were talking about over here a second ago, manage a lot of information, put it together, and then come up with a solution or an outcome. That isn't working very well either. What else? What are, are the Connect. other prefrontal cortex? Connect the dots. Connect. Like think of the next step. Think of the next step. Right. And what I teach my, my clients and my students is that your brain can't do it internally because it's just not equipped to handle it. And I love to tell kids, you know, your brain is fine. It's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. The problem is that the computer program, the application, isn't getting through. Kids love this, oh. And I say, we can do something about that. So now all of a sudden they think, oh, so I'm not damaged. There's hope for me, and it's true. You know, it's that part of the brain where the hormones, the dopamine, norepinephrine, um, all that stuff that needs to power the prefrontal cortex is not getting to the prefrontal cortex, which is why medication helps people focus and slow down. So I often tell people, it's not going to teach you new things, and it's not going to train your brain, but it will help you focus and slow down, which is, can be a huge factor in, in pe helping people succeed. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to make the comment that, you know, it's like I'm someone else at work. At work, I am organized. Mm -hmm. People would not, if they came to my bedroom or saw my closet, would yeah. flip. I, you know, I'm organized. People come to me and say, you know, you seem to be on top of everything. Where's this? So when are we going to do this? And I'm, I'm flattered with that. But when I get home, and, like, I noticed, like, Sunday I wanted to clean my, my, my closet and my room, I felt so drained. Every time I would look at it, I would... Turn the channel. Finally, I found hoarders, and that's what motivated me to get up and clean. Because I'm not, I'm not a hoarder. Good old negative consequence. Yeah. <laughs> when I saw that, and the family was crying, and it just I decided to clean up. Right. So, what's your name? I'm Kim. 
Kim, yeah. why do you think that after working really hard all day to manage yourself and your tasks and your job expectations, when you get when you come home, it's hard? Um, I feel like it's draining. Like yeah. it takes every bit of energy yeah. for me to maintain at work, and when I come home, that's my time. And then yeah. I make excuses like I don't feel like doing it and because it's just me, you know. Yeah. And, and my well, my son knows me, but he's wrong. So it's just like I don't feel like doing it. Yeah. So you know, it's because you work so hard that now you just need to come home and relax. I'm home. Why do we think kids have trouble doing their homework if they have neuroatypical brains? Yeah. They're tired of keeping themselves together and trying to remember everything. They forgot the homework, so they got in trouble, so they're processing that anxiety. They know when they come home, they're gonna to have to start their homework, their mother's gonna get on their case. All this stuff is going on, which makes it hard, right, to do that. And if you're married to somebody with ADHD and they work all day, what do they do when they get home? What do they wanna do, especially the guys? Television. So yeah, they want to do. Kind of yeah. They want to relax. They want to like put their feet up, maybe pop a couple. I don't know, but just relax and be able to process their day. We haven't had time, and you guys know this. You haven't had time to process. So let's get back to procrastination. But thank you so much for those comments. And um, it's good for us to understand that for us, it's even harder to handle procrastination because of all these reasons. All right, um, the second one under today's widely accepted definitions, it is the primary or short-term mood repair. Got that? Mood repair for anxiety, insecurity, and guilt. I love that because when I read that, when I was researching, I read that, I said, wow, that's it. That's what it is, so think about it. If you procrastinate, you're changing your mood so that the anxiety and security and guilt you're doing, whether getting something to drink, and leaving the house, going to do something fun, you know, right? Yeah. All right, anybody have a different opinion about that? Okay, and then it is especially prevalent in people who have a hard time focusing. We talked about that, right? How many of you realize that, that you are avoiding making decisions when you press? Not all the time, but some of the time. Raise your hand. Guys, I really want to do some research, you guys, tonight. That's okay. All right, let me see, put them up. Let me see how many people know that you're avoiding making decisions. Okay, so the left side of the room, or your right side of the room, wins that one for whatever reason. You guys on the left-hand side don't, yeah, I guess you're good decision makers. But anyway, so yeah, that's a way to avoid making a decision. Anybody have an example they want to share? I had my father's, my father um, died in 2008, and I took as many of his belongings as I could, though a lot of it got trashed by my siblings, and I've had them in my apartment ever since. And I did go through some papers and toss some papers, but still most of it I still have, and so there's a whole area of my apartment that's just, I don't use because it's all his stuff. Right, right, and I'm sorry for your loss, but I also know that there are reasons why you're hanging on to things, and what would making a decision mean to you? I think that's difficult, like his, all his tennis trophies, and they're not even that valuable, I mean, they're just plastic things, you know, and I think it's... actually what we're talking about you know there could be that's a really important decision you have to make there are lesser important decisions that we make but thank you so much for sharing that anybody else want to share because part of what we're doing remember folks is healing if we do want to do some healing tonight that's good right how often do we get a chance to heal with a group of trusted people so feel free to you know let go of some things or Mention something that might make you feel better. Um, yes, ma'am. From I, I saw something from what you said. It's like for me, the things that are in that particular room is things that I had wanted to do in the past, or things I've done. So it's let. It's the fear of letting go of old pieces of me. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I thank I you so much. just saw that because of what she said. Yeah, that's yeah. why I encourage yeah, everybody you. to talk, right? Mm -hmm. And that's perfect. Because it is, it's a type of loss. 
Now, people can argue and say, yeah, but it's a kind of loss that you need to experience so you can move on, right? Well, those other people aren't experiencing our loss. Remember that, right? People that give you advice, sometimes we want to take it. That's good. Sometimes we don't. But they're not experiencing the loss. So if they can, they can be helpful, that's great. Otherwise, right, it is. It's definitely letting go of the past is experiencing loss because once you let it go, it's gone. So these are really good um, stories and things that you're sharing with us. So we're going to move on now to answering the following questions. You can see on the worksheet what I'm hoping that you guys will want to do, if you don't, that's fine too, is go along with me and answer some questions so that we can get to the final page, which is strategies to avoid procrastination. So the first question is places where I procrastinate. So fill in that first section. I'm going to give you a little bit of time. And write down the places where you procrastinate. And don't worry about whether they're a big deal or not. You can do that work later. Just write down what's on your mind. Everybody have a handout? Because some of you came after I made the announcement. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. I, like I said at the beginning, I really want this to be valuable tonight, so I don't want you to get stuck on anything. So, in places where you put, is that like, your, like I said, my paperwork, is that? Is that your what? Paperwork, I procrastinate, or is it where? Um, is, what what kind of paperwork? Oh, yeah, kind of paperwork, bills, definitely. Bills, right, bills. Kind of uh huh. So, yeah, write down as, but thank you for oh. saying that. Write down as specific as possible. Okay. Because we procrastinate on paper all the time, but some of it matters and some of it doesn't. So feel free to write down as specific as you can. Okay, so when you're finished with that one, we're going to go on to what is costing me. What is it costing you? Now, when I say costing, I don't necessarily mean money. It could be love, relationships, self-esteem, self-confidence, success. It is all kinds of costs in our life. There's all kinds of things we sacrifice. So what is it costing you? to do those procrastinations. <coughs>
Okay, now this is the most important question of the three, actually, second most, because what is called, what, what is, you, how you procrastinate is the most important. But this is the second most important question. And this is where I want you guys to really think deeper than, oh, I procrastinate because I want to avoid. I want you to go deeper. I want you to think, why do you really, really procrastinate? What is it that you're really afraid of, worried about, triggered by, because it's an old painful memory? What happened to you that this reminds you of? Because it could be something as simple as that, although that's not simple, but it could be something like that. Reminds you of something painful. A memory that you had as a child, were you embarrassed or shamed or hurt or made to look bad? Any of those things are what you really, really are procrastinating about. So what it's really costing me? Yeah, what is it really, what is it really costing me? I gave you some hints a little while ago. Relationships, <gasps> money, opportunities. Opportunities, what opportunities are you missing out on? What relationships, what money, what possibilities in your life? What, what dreams did you have? What goals do you have? What is it really costing you? Because procrastination is definitely getting in the way of this stuff, right? And some of this stuff is really important stuff. So think deep, go take a deep dive and what is it really costing you in some of those procrastinations that you listed in the first one? Now these questions are set up in a way and in an order that if you don't get to everything tonight, that's okay. It's hard to get to everything in one hour and a half um, or less. So you can always do this on your own or do this with a partner. You don't have to get it all done tonight. So just do the best you can to make the most of this moment. Because you're here for a reason, mm -hmm. right? And not just to learn about procrastination or, or talk about it, but to do something about it, right? Right. You guys didn't come just to, to listen, right? Right. I hope so, because like I said, my promise is that you're going to take something really important away tonight. Okay, if you go on to the next one, which procrastinations? And this is where the rubber meets the road. How many of you are ready for the rubber to meet the road? You're ready to walk the talk. You're ready to get on the horse and ride in the direction that you want to go in. You're ready to ride the wave in the direction it's going. All those things. How many of you are ready to do that? Okay, this is where the people that don't have your hands up, what is that about? Fear. 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 Procrastinate. Fear. You're procrastinating Fear. taking Fear. this on. Fear. Fear. This is a, listen, in case I didn't tell you, this is a procrastination workshop. You're not allowed to procrastinate doing things. <laughs> You're here to not do that. When you leave, you can go back to that. But while you're here, which I hope you don't, but while you're here, okay. So how many people are ready to have the rubber meet the road? Okay, we've got one person. I have to talk to her later. <laughs> Offline. Anyway, okay, so this is where you are deciding which procrastinations are important enough that you're willing to change them in order to look at the words I used to be a more effective leader in your own life. You lead your life, or you let your life lead you, or you let the world lead you, or you let procrastination lead you, or all this, uh, that stuff. Or you can be a leader in your life. Now, to some degree, we're all leaders in our life, but I have a feeling that this is an opportunity, an opportunity for you to become a better leader in your life. So which procrastinations that you've written down are you willing to take on? You can do as many, you can do one, or you can do more. 
completely up to you. Yes, go ahead. Um, what is your recommendation? Because, you know, in taking them all on, that seems overwhelming. <laughs> so is it like, you know, better to start with one and try to master that, or is it like just take care of it all at once? That is such a good question. Thank you so much for coming tonight, because I should have talked about that. Okay, so did everybody hear the question? Should I take them all on? Because it's feeling overwhelming to do that. Here's what I've learned, and what I love about working with people. You take on one, and you go through and you do it all the way to success, the rest of them just kind of fall in line, mm -hmm. right? How do you have noticed that once you start and you have one success, then the other ones are easier. Yes. You know how to do it now, and you feel so good because you outwitted the procrastination that you want to try it again. There's, a, there's another opportunity. So you can do just one if you want, or you can do more. But does that answer your question? Yeah. In other words, it's all about taking one step at a time, mm -hmm. right? After you take that step, you'll see what it's necessary to take the second step when it comes to something like this. Okay, I'm looking at pencils and I think we're good to go, mostly. All right, so we're gonna skip, we're gonna go to the third page, and we're gonna skip the top two. Before we do the top two, we're going to talk about the strategies that you can use to control, outwit, overcome, and put procrastination in your rear view mirror. Slap it down, get rid of it in that moment. And remember, behavior change isn't all at once. How does behavior change happen? One step at a time. One step at a time. One success at a time. One opportunity at a time. So you're not going to be perfect with procrastination tomorrow morning. But if you keep focusing on it as something that you want to accomplish in your life because it's important enough, and you use one or more of the strategies I'm going to share with you, or maybe you come up with others or better ones, please email me if you do. Um, you're going to succeed. And what's possible if you don't procrastinate? What would be possible in your life? Before we go on and we start talking about strategy, I think that's a good question. Anybody? If you stop procrastinating, you could pick one or two of the major ones that are holding you hostage. Yes, ma'am. My page will be clear because I procrastinate. I, I have um, bipolar disorder, so I teach my, my face and everything to stop procrastinating. Did everybody hear her? She has a compulsion, would you call it? To yeah. mess with your face, right? Like you know. right. And procrastination is keeping you from dealing with it, right? And so on a scale of one to ten, what's it worth to you to stop that? Ten. A what? Ten. Good. Alright, so I'll share something personal with you. I bite my cuticles. It's a super compulsion. It is so hard for me to manage because of my ADHD. And you know that, mm, gotta move, gotta move, gotta move kind of thing we all have. So I'm always trying to manage it. It's something that I have to learn to manage. So it is a definite priority and I don't procrastinate. Although I'm not gonna say I'm 100% successful, I'm a lot better than I was. So I understand exactly what you're saying. Anybody else want to share? Can I just ask you a question? Yeah. There's like this form of rumination, like when you don't do it and you keep looking at it. It's, it, it's almost like the rumination, ruminating is like an addiction unto itself. Mm -hmm. Is there a connection between rumination and procrastination? That'd make a good song, actually. <laughs> I think so, that rhymes. So we can do something with that, right? So the question is, is there a connection between rumination and procrastination? Anybody have any ideas? Because I haven't considered that, although I could see there could be. Yes? I don't know what rumination means. 
Okay, can you explain your rumination? Loud voice? It's just something that you think over and over and, you know, the clutter. You think oh, over and over. You always see it. And you think about it all the time. That's what it is. Yeah. Instead of doing it. It's like having an obsession over a great man or something. That's and what did you say? Ruminating instead of doing it. Instead of doing something about well, that it. That is doing. You're, you're in your mind. Yeah. 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 And so rumination is kind of like a compulsive behavior. Mm -hmm. There, um, if you talk to psychologists, they'll tell you, yeah, I have, I have clients that ruminate and clients that don't. The clients that ruminate are harder to change their behavior because mm -hmm. the rumination has, affects their mood so much. Mm -hmm. Because they're ruminating on, on stuff that usually is painful, difficult, makes them feel bad about themselves, makes mm -hmm. them feel like a failure, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the secret, at least one of them, is to do something about it. So if you're ruminating on a conversation you had that went bad, I know I have those. Anybody have conversations that always work out the way you like them to? No. no. Right? No, only one, two people in this whole room. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Be honest, right? We have those conversations or encounters, let's say. Yeah. yeah. So instead of ruminating on how bad that went and how bad we feel, and oh my gosh, here I am, making a mess of things again, screwing up again, not good enough, and you go down the rabbit hole, the spiral with that one, right? right? Do something. Write about it. It's something as simple as write about it. Mm -hmm. Like, how does it feel mm -hmm. to, to have had that encounter? And what does it mean? And sometimes you can write about it and you can go, oh, you know what, I need to let this go. And you're actually letting it go when you're writing about it. Johnny. Um, I just learned a long time ago to ruminate to just to make it positive. And I focus on the things that I want to have happen because I tend to obsess and so I just try to obsess about what I want to do and I see myself doing it. It's kind of like the visualizations for athletes and things like that. And I just I just focus, I just you feel you know and see what I want to see. Thank you, Johnny. Now, those of you who didn't hear Johnny, Johnny realized in his life a while back that if he's going to ruminate, which is a natural inclination for many of us, ruminate on something positive. Ruminate on something that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if you're going to work hard, work hard on something you love. Because it's a lot easier and requires a lot less energy than working hard on something you don't love, that you dislike, that you hate. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's real important for people to know what's important to them and do what's important to them, not how hard it is. Because it's, it may be really hard to do it, but when you get there, it's worth all the pain and trouble you went through. And it's the same thing with rumination, because your thoughts control what? What do your thoughts mean, by the way? How important are these things that happen all day long in our head? It's our reality, it's perception of reality. It's your reality, what you believe you achieve. What you believe you achieve. If you believe, you'll never make more than $15,000 a year or 20 or whatever it is, you can't ever make more than that because you've already told your brain, that's all I can do. Your subconscious mind, which is your autopilot, puts that information you give it from your conscious mind, stores it, and that's how it operates in your life. So thoughts are really important. And like Johnny said, if you're gonna ruminate Ruminate with good thoughts. Ruminate with what it would be like if the next encounter was with the right person. Or if this went better because you learned something new and so you, we all make mistakes, you learn from your mistake. Next time, you don't learn. What do you need to do to overcome this, this rumination? How special are you? How talented and skillful are you? Is it just about this one encounter and now you're gonna slap yourself around and go down the rabbit hole of oblivion? Is it worth it? No. But that's what we do. So it's important to understand that you're doing that. Great. Anybody else have anything to contribute? Yes. I just wanted to say, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm hardwired to be a pessimist or whatever, but I can have the best day. And if I something happens negative with a client, it just plays in my mind like a loop, like word for word. And like it can affect me for days if I have a, a negative encounter or something. And um, I play it out in my head. I think the only thing that helps me is to sometimes write it out so it's not swimming. Mm -hmm. And I can get it on paper and then I go over it and feel the way I feel and then I just dismiss it. But it takes 
it's a process. I right. Mean, I want to. I want to get on the happy thoughts, and sometimes I can. But just the smallest bad thing can just. All right. You know out. what? You have the habit of doing that somewhere in your life, in the past. You develop this habit um, for all the right reasons. You know, you this was what you ended up doing to handle something that was painful or difficult for you. And, and it, it was probably a pretty painful thing. Those are the ones that usually continue being habits. So it was a painful moment. It was extra painful. And to survive, you use that strategy. Now, it's like an ongoing habit. So you need to break the habit. And I, Johnny has a good idea, and writing is a good idea, working with someone to help you break the habit. But here's what I've learned. If we have a moment in time, you know how our moments are like milliseconds when things happen? If we don't have a way to deal with that, all ready to go, that's not the moment where we're gonna invent something perfect, right? A perfect way, the right way to deal with that. It's important for us to realize that we need to think about these things when we have bad moments, encounters, we fail. What is the truth about us? Well, we can pretend that 10% of our life that's not going real well is like the 90% that is, but does that make sense? Just because we have a bad moment, we fail, we do something, there are all kinds of good things going on. So we need to look at that from the opposite, you know, turn it around. How is the rest of your life? What can you do about this? Because we all fail, we all get back up. And one of the great definitions about failure is, failure is an opportunity to learn and grow. The more you fail, the more you grow and learn and succeed. If you don't fail, you know, you talk to real successful people that came from nowhere, brought themselves up all by themselves, they'll tell you, I failed many more times than I succeeded. Like Babe Ruth, I know. Some of you young people don't even know who he is, but <laughs> he was a baseball player. He was fantastic. And he used to say all the time, oh, he said, I may have the world records for, for um, strikeouts. Or, what, well, you remember what he has the world record for anymore? Home runs. <laughs> what? Home runs. Home runs, that's right. He, but he says, I failed more than I succeeded. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to remember that. And if you're procrastinating, Having that solution when you feel bad or something bad happens, you can say to yourself, okay, I'm really a person who's learning to grow and love myself every moment of every day. If you don't have something that you can just immediately bling, go to, you're gonna fall into that sticky wicket where that thing's gonna wanna drag you and throw you around. So have something that's already there because we all know we're going to experience stuff in our life that's painful and difficult. Yes? Um, something that I resorted to, which actually has helped me a lot, like when I think of negative like this, and it can be any kind of thing, is I just, I do like a, just like spitting it out of my system. Like I don't really spit, but just, and it just kind of lets it go. It's worked out really well. Everybody wrong. hear that? She came up with her own. Just yeah. gotta go. Yeah, just, everybody do it together here. Everybody do it. So, yeah. What I do is I put my plexiglass shield up. Mm. Now my plexiglass shield is plexiglass. It's not going to break, right? So somebody's coming at me with some negativity and hey, you know, I just can't say forget you and walk away because sometimes it's a family member, sometimes it's a boss or a good friend that is just kind of not helping, being helpful right now. I put the shield up. And when that, those words start coming at me, I see them fall down the other side of the shield. Mm. Right? They fall down the other side of the shield because they can't get to me. And that's important because we all need to protect ourselves. The people that we want in our life are the people that honor us, love us, and give us information and help that we appreciate out of a loving heart. Right? The other people, mm, not so much. And you know they're going to show up. So put up your plexiglass shield. The other thing I do is I sit in my chair and I can't make a decision and I'm just like discombobulated every way possible. So I go like this, I pick myself up, I put myself over, out of the way. It's amazing how that works. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I'm like, oh, I need to do this. So find your own, and that's a very, thank you for sharing that, because that's a really good thing. That's one of the examples of how you can carry something around, ready to go, ready to use when you need it. 
Okay, so now we're going to talk about strategies. So let's talk about how to control your tendency to procrastinate. Number one, use more immediate rewards. This is from the guy who wrote that book. I have it in here somewhere. It's a bestseller because I thought there are two of these. Oh, the Atomic Habits by James Clear on page two at the top. That's one of the things from his book that I thought was really good. Use more immediate rewards. So in other words, if I have to write a proposal, I hate writing proposals or filling out application forms. So what do I do? I go to my favorite sushi shop. I put my sushi in the fridge, and I can't touch that sushi until it's half done. And what's it for you? The same thing. Immediate. Give yourself. Your brain's wired that way. Give yourself an immediate reward so that you are more likely to not procrastinate. This is the whole point. Some of you tell me what your immediate rewards are. Yes. Huh? Chocolate. chocolate. Now, if I use chocolate, mm, I'd be in super trouble. I can't. I have to be really careful with chocolate. But yes, chocolate is a great one. Yes. If you can stick to this, oh, honey, you have got a lot of willpower if you can stick to one piece of chocolate. It's like a bag of potato chips. I can't just eat one. Yes. That was uh, going to be my point. I, I try to reward myself, but then I get to start procrastinating. You procrastinate so your reward? Wait, oh, my reward. <laughs> like, I'll try to tell myself, okay, you know, you can go on social media or play your game for five minutes once you finish this task. But then five minutes turns into longer, and I can't use food as yeah. rewards, really, because I'm diabetic. Mm -hmm. So, I so what's the problem? It sounds like you're getting it done without needing the reward. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I, I finish the task, and then I... She embellished. I finish, I finish 15 minutes of the task, let's say. And then I start playing my game, and five minutes goes by, and then 10. And oh, your rewards and keep going. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so you've got the wrong. What, everybody? She's got the wrong what? Reward. Rewards. Yeah. You have to come up with a reward. Um, and also timers. You can have a little you buzz on your phone or watch or whatever. Time yourself. And also, the most important thing is when you sit down before you do whatever this project is, prepare everything. How long you're going to do this part, how long the break's going to last, what you're doing during the break, when the next part starts, then the end of that, what that, what's that break. So what you're doing is you're already teaching, training your brain. Hey brain, this is how this is going to go. And if you don't remember, we have it written down right here. So that's, that is also a help. But yeah, don't come up with any <laughs> rewards. <laughs> like my kids always want to do things like video games. And I'm like, hmm, let's talk about the video game idea. And because they're kids, I say, OK, let's try the video game first. And of course, they come back and got all kinds of bad news. They're not lying to me anyway. And then we have to say, OK, well, we tried that. Let's try something else. All right, so find some good ways to reward yourself immediately that will not take away from your finishing your project. So for when I was um, trying to get serious about working out on a regular basis, and it was, there were just 20-minute workouts, so I would say, okay, I'm going to eat after I do the 20 minutes. I'm going to have my cup. I don't drink coffee anymore, but I'm going to have my cup of coffee after I do the 20 minutes. So that would encourage me to get that done so that I can... Yeah, and that would be first thing in the morning. Right. And if starting out at first home. thing. You can work out at home. Mm -hmm. Right. So she's talking about working out for 20 minutes and then rewarding herself by starting it first thing in the morning. What I've learned about human beings mm -hmm. is the best time to do something important that you want to make a routine or a habit mm -hmm. is do it first thing in the morning. First of all, if you start out first thing in the morning, being angry and upset with yourself because you laid in bed and didn't do what you're supposed to do and the morning now is wasted, how are you going to feel the rest of the day? Yeah. Right, you're, the day's just kind of shot because you're not going to be at your best and you're not going to be creative and right on top of things like you really are. So the morning is a really good time to be able to do workouts, meditation, um, practice your instrument, 
remind myself about that one. And anything that you're also, that you're trying to make become a habit, something new that you're trying to change or you're trying to bring into your life. Because you get up and you haven't, here's the thing, you get up and you haven't started anything yet. So right, you're right for whatever is possible. Because there's nothing going on that you have to tear yourself away and you have to change what you're doing and you have to go through this whole thing. You get out of bed, do whatever you do in the morning to get ready, and you immediately, or even right out of bed, you immediately take on your new habit or the thing that you know you're going to procrastinate on if you don't do it right away, get it done, and the rest of your day you're feeling, like, I did a great job. Okay, use more immediate consequences. So, again, we're talking about immediate because of the way the brain's wired. So what are some immediate consequences that you can use? Somebody give me something they do or something they think would be a good solution to one of their procrastinations. What's an immediate consequence? Well, you yes. have negative real estate, meaning that the thoughts in your brain. So a consequence of not taking an action means that you have to think about doing that thing and then that just keeps rumin ruminating. Ruminating. Brain. So if, if you want to prevent that, then you say that's a consequence of me just not taking this action. So it's taking up this valuable real mm -hmm. estate that I can have positive thoughts on. Instead of that, by me not doing this, it's just going to make this thing keep spinning. So to stop that, I, it's only taking me 10 minutes. Let me just do 10 minutes a day. And then once you get that, you feel good. You feel grounded. You already started your, you know, mm -hmm. of where you do self-care. And then that just kind of keeps, it, it, I call it getting grounded. Okay, great. Getting grounded. So instead of ruminating on something that you could have done in 10 minutes, but you're ruminating on it for eight hours or a week, mm -hmm. <gasps> right? Do something about it. Start, what, what was that? So like, let's say the clutter in the room, right? Yeah. So if you just made a commitment to do 10 minutes a day, every day. Did everybody hear her? Mm -hmm. So every day you just made this commitment, 10 minutes a day, and so when you wake up, you do the 10 minutes. Even if you don't feel like it, you're like, okay, well, I don't want to have to be thinking about how I felt about not doing it, so I'm just going to do 10 minutes a day, and then after a while, after you do your 10 minutes, when I, I created like a little chart, and I, yeah, great. I, I mark it off. I actually have it. I think I might, oh no, I might have left. So no, anything, we call these structures, anything that you can do, like she has a chart that she carries around with her, anything that you can do externally to monitor, to support, to keep track of how you're doing with your procrastination is really, really valuable. And you know, the Weight Watchers knows this. Because Weight Watchers captures all those people that calorie count and I can't go into more detail because I haven't done that program, but I know that's one of the reasons they're successful because people have to keep track, monitor, pay attention on a regular basis and like a log, a log of achievement or in some cases, non-achievement. So absolutely. And the key there is you have to do it anyway. Nike was right. Just do it. You get up, you don't feel like doing it. I get up and I put... I sit on the side of the bed and I think, oh, do I really have to have this day? Can I, how can I avoid doing this day? I mean, I love what I do. It's wonderful work that I do. But I'm a human being. I wake up and I just, you know, but I'm the only one in here that does that, right? You guys never have that, right? We all do this. So what you have to say is just do it. You have to remember what is the reward or what is the consequence. So these short-term rewards and consequences are going to make it easier for you to just do it rather than procrastinate it because it's important to you or you wouldn't have chosen it. Yes? So in her mind, she's saying that the pain of her illuminating on it, or illuminating on it, or dwelling on the not taking action outweighs just the straightening up. Like, it, you know, she's thinking that in her mind, I don't want to clean up for whatever reason, but the pain of her having to think about it all day long outweighs the, the, the thing she needs to just go ahead and take and care of. So 
basically for me, I was I'm trying to learn to change my behavior, my my habits. So okay, your habit changing. Right, and so like the the clutter, right? So if you make that commitment that, and basically it's consistency. That's the whole point is staying consistent. So the you just do ten minutes a day, ten minutes a day, and you would be surprised how much you get done if you just do ten minutes a day because you can do anything for ten minutes. So it's kind of like you get the instant gratification because after the ten minutes you set your timer. You're doing something you don't want to do. You set the timer. Ten minutes goes off. Okay. Oh, I got that done. Now you feel better about yourself because you did that 10 minutes and you don't have to worry about it until tomorrow when the next 10 minutes come. So your name is Kim. Deb. Kim. Deb. You just. Deb. Deb. Debbie. 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 Yeah. Who's Kim? I don't know. Somebody over there is Kim. Debbie. Debbie. You're Kim, you're Debbie. Debbie is saying something that is I had to learn the hard way too. And that's if you do a little bit every day, you get there. People get lost in the weeds with this one because. It's a big project. You don't even know all the things you need to know to get it done. What if, what if you just can't do it or you hate the idea of it? Whatever it is, if you do, like Debbie said, 10 minutes. And so I have people start meditating in the morning, five minutes. Just do five minutes of meditation. But if you do a little bit every day, like empty your email box, I have people, I have clients that Thousands, thousands. And do a little bit every day, all of a sudden you're done. And you don't even remember it being an issue because you just broke off little chunks. And you did a little bit every day. Thank you, Debbie. It's a popular work structure, you know, they, they kind of mention that too. What's that? You know, it's a pot, it's, it's, you see it a lot in corporate, corporate management, uh, mm -hmm. they, they kind of call it, just jump in. You know. Is that what they call in corporate America? Well, <laughs> aerospace, you know, you know. Same thing. How, how's that coming on? Ah, uh, help Start again. Well, jump in. You know, jump in. Jump in, yeah. And, uh, that's a good, that's, those are two good words. Jump in. Jump in, yeah. Just jump in. Just well, absolutely. So make sure you don't, there's water in the pool before you do it. <laughs> um, one thing I noticed, though, is being ADD, is that I'm not time, I'm not, I don't think a long time. I'm project-oriented, not time-oriented. <laughs> So if I see something that's too big, I don't have enough time, so I don't want to start it. And, but if I break it in, if I just do 10 minutes a day over, you know, some things you, you, you get immersed in and then you spend more time on it, but you realize the things you don't want to do, over time you're able to get them done. And then it makes you more aware of time. Like Good you point. You judge your time better, you become more time oriented versus project oriented. Good, very good. Um, there's, you know, there seem to be two kinds of people. People like you, who are, ta I call it task oriented, mm -hmm. and then people who are time oriented. Usually they're the same thing, well, actually they're the same thing, but usually one or the other works for different people. So thank you, it is, it's all about learning how long things take. The part of the brain, again, if we're back to atypical brain types, the part of the brain that is supposed to understand and manage time, no. The only way you're ever going to learn how to understand the manage time is by creating a system of understanding. I have people schedule themselves, schedule their entire day so they start to get a handle on how long things really take. Well, I was going to be on time, but then I didn't think about commuting. Well, that's the whole point. If you don't put commuting in your schedule, you're going to forget about the commuting and you're, not, you're going to be late, even though you thought you were leaving on time. So it's a very, very good point. So let's go on to the next one. Make the task highly achievable. Don't try to do something that already has a bunch of blocks in front of it. Anybody have one of those I want to share? Something you know that you are procrastinating, but you, all you can think of when you think of this thing that you're procrastinating is all the things that are going to make it impossible, difficult. You don't have time for that. You can't call him again because you already asked him one question. God forbid you ask him two questions. You didn't hear the instructions, you can't tell him that. There's all these things that go on in our life that are not really important, but we act as if they are because we don't want to look stupid or we don't want to look like we're not paying attention. But it's really important to make the task achievable. Yes, Kim, did you have something you want to offer? No, not Oh, okay, yes. So I'm redoing my 
Oh, loud lane. Oh, my okay, I'm redoing my kitchen floor. Well, I think I'm redoing it. <laughs> and uh, there's this expression, I don't know if you guys ever heard, it's called uh, time drunk. Have you ever heard that? Time, time drunk? drunk? No, I can't say I have. It's how you just get drunk on time. You're not drinking, you're just drunk on time. And uh, so I found this one floor that I fell in love with, and then I asked my son what he thought. And he said, that never will go with the rest of the house. And so now I'm like totally overwhelmed. I've got a trunk full of this stuff that I already bought. I have to return it. And for me, the procrastination kind of takes away the um, anxiety. So I think procrastination right. Right. can really be a buffer for the anxiety. Because I, I don't know if they're going to take it back. I've been calling it around for two weeks now. You know, it's maybe... I lost the time. Well, that's what that's just it. It's a buffer, but it's a buffer that keeps buffering, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. the problem. It can buffer way out of control, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you're left with a bunch of floor tiles. And by the way, um, how come your son gets to decide yeah. the floor tiles? Yeah. Much just, better, just asking. Well, he has much better taste than I do. That's, that's why. Okay. Well, three of my friends said, if you like it, do it. Yeah. But it doesn't really well, who's going to live in the house the longest? You or your son? He doesn't live there. Oh. Oh, he's going to live there. All right, all right. We'll have to talk about this later. Okay, so thanks for sharing. I get it. That's what we do, right? Everybody relate to that? That's what we do. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, is I keep saying I need to make YouTube videos, and I keep saying, oh, i got to learn how to post them. i got to learn, you know, and I'm always, like, blocking, and people are like, just look for on YouTube on how to make YouTube videos. And I'm like, I know, I know. And it's this cycle. I'm like, oh, I have to get lights. I have to get the right micing system and all things like that. So I keep putting up these roadblocks. Right. And that's what I have to bust. Through. So what you're gonna get more roadblocks mm -hmm. from right, YouTube, right, right? Right. So what are some immediate? Don't answer because we gotta move on. Yeah, yeah. But for you, what are the immediate rewards? What are the immediate consequences? How can you make it achievable? Because it's like me getting videotaped tonight. It's the same thing, you know. The more I get videotaped, the better I get at it, the more I understand how to do it. Can't stand to see myself on video, but I gotta get over that. It's the same thing. You know, jump in. Just jump in. That was, a, that was I like those two words. Um, okay, do the preparation. And this kind of goes with make the task achievable. I know a lot of my clients, if they don't prepare for a task, if they have to go into another room to get something, or they forgot to bring something home, or whatever, if they don't prepare, they can't do the task. And it's a real thing. It really is. You're tired, you don't want to do it anyway. If, you, if it's sitting there, like all the materials you need, your pencil's sharp, or your pen's there, the directions are there, the computer's where it needs to be, the email is open, you know, everything is ready to go and you're prepared, you're much more likely to do the task, mm -hmm. right? And you, everybody raise your hand if you get that. It's just, you know, and I've learned over time of coaching people that that's really an important part of getting things done is make sure you have the materials, you've done the preparation, and if you can, prepare long before you have to do it so you come home from work. But gosh darn it, you've got to get this application in, or the FAFSA, right, for those of you who are oh, college age kids. Oh, okay, <laughs> moans and groans, because I've been there and so have you. And you know you've got to get it in. You can't keep putting it off. So you've uh, all lined up. You have the financial information, the contact information, the organizations, all those things that parents need to fill out on that form to get their kids scholarship aid. Have that ready to go. You're more likely, right, Debbie? to sit down and do it if it's, when you're tired and you're not interested, if it's all set up. Now, not guaranteed, but much more likely. Okay, use the one minute rule. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something right now that's really, really super gonna change your life. For those of you who don't do it. How many of you have a minute to spare between tasks and activities? Raise your hand. Oh, good, because some people don't, some people don't raise their hand, I'm thinking, Whoo. when was the last time you found out how long a minute really is? This is how I came up with this, talking about helping people figure out how to manage their time and 
do it now, don't put it off, and all this stuff. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Went over to my <coughs> phone, and I did my little stopwatch thing, and I closed my eyes, and I, and I thought about all the things I could do in a minute, and I went, oh, a minute is really a long time. And that's because everything has speeded up so much in our society, in our life, in the world, that a minute is now super long, right? Because everything else is bing, 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 bing. So everybody raise their hand, they have a minute. So the one minute rule is, if you can do it in a minute, do it now. Don't put it off. You know the famous thing we all are guilty of? I'll remember that. Yeah. I know I remember that. Oh, it's yeah. too important for me to forget, right? Okay. Or no, I don't have time to write this down. Or uh, what I used to do, there would be a newspaper back in the newspaper days. There would be a newspaper, and I'd write it on the corner of the newspaper. Yeah. Oh, I'll be sure and go back to that newspaper. I'll tear it off. I'll look at it. Oh, where's the newspaper? Did I write it on the newspaper? <laughs> I mean, how many of you have done things like that? We all do, right? So I encourage you to sit with your phone or, or a clock or a stopwatch. See how long a minute is. You're going to be amazed. You can go to the bathroom, get something to drink, answer an email, change your schedule, call somebody. Who would have thought? And it was so exciting. I said, Oh, that really proves how much the world has speeded up. If a minute is now a long time, yeah. all right? That's going to save a lot of problems, right? It change yes. everybody's life, right? Yes. Yeah. So there's this, it's called, uh, well, Google Docs. And they have um, on the app, it's called Keep. And you can make check checklists. So yeah. right now, because my memory is not so good, it's growing older. So if something comes at me, I just automatically go straight in there and I put the initials of whatever, whoever it is, and I'll just, instead of writing it on a, on a stick -um because that could get lost, and if you don't have a copy of it where you wrote the note, you can't find the note. So either I use a foam pad that's carbonless, or I go straight into my keep thing, and then I record it immediately, just so that the thought doesn't disappear, and instead of it, it goes into the, that. So Debbie has a real quick fix, and I call that a shortcut. So Debbie has a shortcut to handling this in Google Docs. So everybody can see Debbie afterwards or go to Google, Google Docs. Keep. Google Keep. Google, Google Keep. I haven't even been on and that. And then you could have, like, you could have your passwords in one area. Whatever uh, it is, you can sort and Google put Google Keep. Oh, Google okay, so you guys can go on Google Keep and check that out. Okay, let's go on to number six. Use visual cues and a written schedule of task. And visual cues cannot be horizontal. What happens to surfaces? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And our eyes don't even go, oh. Our eyes don't even go there, or else we're trying to find something. Vertical cues, stickies, whiteboards, calendars, just reminders. I have my kids put a card on their door jam in their bedroom so they wake up in the morning, they have to see it because they gotta leave the room. It's right there on the door jam in their bedroom. Things like that. Where can you put visual cues and reminders? A good way to lose weight is put a picture of your skinny old self when you were in your 20s or 18 or whatever and a picture of yourself now and look at that every morning. You're gonna say, wow, girlfriend, what happened to you? We gotta do something about this, right? And I once had um, found a way for somebody to get a car that way. She, her car was all broken and getting ready to die. And she couldn't figure out how to pay for it, how to get a new one, so we went through this whole thing. And she put the car, picture of the car she wanted on her refrigerator. It's amazing how we can be magnetized to things mm -hmm. when we've got a yes. visual picture. Visual pictures are important, right? That's why pictures worth a thousand words, whoever made that up, is absolutely right. Get pictures of yourself succeeding, of things happy, like the beach trip you want to take to wherever it is, Acapulco or whatever, you know, put that picture on your refrigerator. All these things are going to be motivators and short term, you think about it, the idea of going on that trip is going to be really motivating, even if the trip's months or weeks away. All these are motivators to remind you how important it is not to procrastinate. Because that procrastination is going to take away from that trip mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any examples of that? Visual board? Yeah, visual board. They have different names for it. 
I've made those before. They're really fun to make and they really do work. Because you, you know, you sit down, do anybody know what those are? You know, take a poster board, you sit down, cut out pictures either from the internet or from magazines, and you put them on the board and they tell little stories about you and you cut out words about who you are and who you're becoming. They're very powerful because they're visual. So have things in your, again, not horizontal and flat surfaces, vertical on walls, doors, refrigerators, mirrors in your bathroom, anything where you're gonna, oh, oh yeah, I'm working on that. Okay, um, schedule of task, again, write it down. I have a motto that I use with my clients. If it isn't written, it isn't real. That's my motto, that's what I use. I came up with that, I don't know why, but it seems to work. And the point I'm making with them, look, your brain is not set up that you're gonna be able to remember things in a way that's gonna make you understand how they're gonna unfold all day and all week. No way can you do that up here. And if you're not doing it up here, you're not doing it. And so I had somebody tell me today, well, I figured out that if I don't put the commuting time down and my shower time down and my breakfast time down, and my meditation down, the day gets messed up. And I'm saying, yeah, yeah, all that's important. And remember, you're training your brain. You're training your brain to cooperate with you to help you keep your schedule and get done what you want to get done. Mm -hmm. And be successful, that's the whole point. Be happy. Okay, have an ongoing daily routine. How many of you have an ongoing morning routine? Really, really important, I encourage everybody. Nobody has one. One person. Okay, you need to get help to have an ongoing morning routine because that sets your life. It just doesn't, it doesn't just set your day up, it sets your whole life because when you have a good start yes. to the day, your day is gonna be creative, successful, you're gonna be on top of things, you're gonna be happy, you're gonna like yourself, you're gonna get along with people, you're gonna do things you wouldn't ordinarily do because you're gonna have the confidence to do them. Morning routines are critical. All my clients have to, if they're gonna work with me, have to have a morning routine and it makes a huge difference. So morning routines, all routines are good, morning routines particularly, yes ma'am? We live with, my, with his father, and um, our daughter, like, if we don't do a bath or like, get dressed, like everything, and if he comes up, I mean, out of his room, starts asking him, do this for me, do this for me, our all, the whole routine with our daughter is a mess. So I always tell him, please, I know you love your father, but put him. Well, good for you, mom. That's why we have moms, because moms are the protectors, in this case, of the routine that you need for your family with your child and for all three of you, or however many children you yeah, have. Yes, that's his father. But. Well, you know what? We can't always please everybody, but you know, parents are the ones who have to set the rules for their families how their families are gonna work, and that comes first. And I know you're living with him, so I'm sure it's some kind of a precarious balance, right, sometimes? Stick to your guns, though, because that's what's gonna matter in the long run. When you look back, you're gonna say, aren't we glad we did what we did, because we knew it was the right thing to do. Good for you. Yes? One thing that I have a hard time with is that I become very practical, and then there's no more fun. <laughs> oh, so like it's just all yeah. work like uh, everything is a job and everything is like okay I, I, on my grave it's gonna be like oh. no no <laughs> I'm serious like it's it's like okay you know once I get all this stuff done then I can have fun mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and but then it never it's like so I, I think permission to like just enjoy like I don't I'm starting I just started watching TV which sounds crazy you know like at my age, 58 years old. <laughs> but, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, just giving yourself permission to, like, the routine should have fun in it. Absolutely. So, um, I just made up something in my ADHD brain. And, and what it is, is find fun, F-U-N, find your, find you now. Find you now, because what's you? We are still the little children, mm -hmm. that little child that likes to have fun, that teenager, that young adult, oh, that is still in you, that is still you. And why are you ignoring it? All fun, all work and no play? You know, 
all those those sayings that we have that we grow up and we used to crawl, you know roll our eyes at our parents and all that, we come we get to an age where we start to appreciate how smart they were, right? And you know we didn't back then, but it's true. So yeah, have fun when you look back. What are the things you're going to remember? I'm going to ask you because you are probably younger than me, but we're kind of the same age. What do you think? When you're looking back. What are you remembering? I, I, I remember some painful things that I realize now are actually connected to my present day procrastination. Mm -hmm. All right, you remember the painful things, but it, during the day, oh. on a typical day, if you weren't in this workshop, and you're just thinking about your life, what are you thinking about in the past? Um, trips, travel. I'm a, I'm a travel. You're thinking about where you've gone, you're traveling. Where I've gone uh -huh. and looking forward to more travel. Looking forward to travel. What about the people? Your, your family, your children, your friends? Um, mostly focus on my granddaughter. Your granddaughter? Yeah, wanting to, you know, she's a 15 year old. There you go. You know, spending time. Yeah, and how many, how much time do you spend with all, ruminating on all your mistakes? Too much. You do? Okay, you're, you're an exception. Because most of the time when we get older, we realize that what's really, what really matters is the fun, the great times, the places we went and visited, the people in our life that we love. And we say, why did I ever worry so much about all that other stuff? It really isn't that important. So we've got one more, and then we're going to wrap it up because um, we have to. I want to get you guys home. Design and write down your life plan. There's nothing more motivating than to have a plan. This is where I am. This is where I want to be. And it's not OK just to keep it up here. That's, of course, where it starts. But you really want to write it down, and you really want to revisit it, and you want to change it, adjust it as you progress. Because if you can keep in mind where you're going and the possibilities and the wonderful things at the end of that trip and, and during the trip, on the path, that is going to be very motivating for you. It's going to, it's going to, you're going to look at procrastination as just kind of like a little stone in the way you need to get out of the way or a pebble in your shoe that you need to remove mm -hmm. instead of something that's grabbing you and keeping you stuck. Have a life plan. Have a future. Write it down. Where are you going? What do you want to achieve? Who's going to help you achieve that? What are the resources to help you achieve this? Why do you want to achieve it? All that is great work for procrastination. Because like I said, when you have that to refer to, and that's part of your thinking and daily with problem solving, imagining, dreaming, goal orienting, all that is going to help you realize that the things you procrastinate on are not something you should procrastinate on because there's more important things out there. So um, we're going to have to stop, but one more oh, thing. Do you have a book or a reference to help you kind of write this life plan? Do you have reference? Yes, well, I do actually, um, I do have a book. My sandals are not on right. Hang on just a second. There we go. They look so comfortable, though, Sam. They are, but they have to be put on right over there. <laughs> They're going to cause me trouble. OK, so this is my book. And in this book, I do have a way to set up your life plan. And there is some information on, um, there's little cards in the back there on that round table with, with the book on it, get it on Amazon. Um, the, there is information on procrastination and a whole lot of other stuff. Basically, it's based on um, my 40-year career working with children from preschool up to senior citizens with an ADHD brain. And what I realize is they're really innovators mm. that have quirky habits and different ways of doing things and can be terribly annoying, bad communicators, a whole lot of other stuff. But they can learn to be better. And they have gifts to give the world, just like Mozart and Jobs and um, the Wright brothers. And I could go on and on, Winston Churchill, Kennedys. 
A lot of really, really famous people that have made great contributions. Okay? Thank you. I hope I didn't go over. If you, yeah, is it okay? Yeah. Oh yeah, I have some books if you want to buy one. They're $16.99. This was good. I liked it. Was it good? Yeah. Yes. Did it help everybody? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.